So here is that same code on Python Tutor. We are going to visualize the execution. Again, I'm going to be using the non-default visualization to help you see the variable assignments. So during this execution, I want you to pay attention to this red arrow. Remember, in Python Tutor, the red arrow indicates the statement that is about to execute. Here, the red uh, arrow is referring to line 1, which is the first statement that has Python code. In any Python program, the first statement to execute is the topmost one that actually has Python code. So we will click on next and I want you to observe what happens to the red arrow and also what happens on the right where we will visualize the execution. So we click on next and we see that we are in what is called the global frame. The global frame is shown as this uh, dark colored box and in there doesn't this look like a variable that has been assigned to an object? So it turns out the def statement is just like an assignment. It assigns a variable, namely the name of the function, and it assigns it to a function object. But look what has happened to the red arrow. It hasn't gone from line 1 to line 2. It has jumped all the way down to line 13. Python says what you have on line 1 is a definition. It's a function definition. I'm going to treat that like an assignment statement. You have a function named is multiple. I have created a function object and labeled it with the name of your variable is multiple. And that's all I'm going to do. The body of this function is only going to be executed when we call the function. And we will call the function later on, on line 16. For now, the red arrow is on line 13, and it is waiting for an input. Now, in Python Tutor, when we are waiting for an input, we get this little text box. In this text box, I'm going to enter the values n equals 10 and m equals 0. And let's see what happens. So I enter the integer 10 and I click on submit. Here we have A being assigned to whatever the result of input was, which is notice a string object. It's 10 but in quotes. Now we will do the second input. B is the second integer. Once again, I will enter 0. What I would like you to do as you get comfortable with the visualization before clicking on next or pressing submit in this case, I want you to imagine what change you are going to see in the visualization, that is the data, and in the red arrow, which is the control. You could of course just press enter or click on next and let Python Tutor show you. But that's a bit like just sitting back leisurely and watching a movie and letting the next scene happen. You need to be actively engaged for this to make sense to you. If you simply let Python Tutor show you, of course Python Tutor will show you what is correct. But you will never get a chance to check your understanding. So the best way to use Python Tutor is to imagine what is going to happen. So I have just entered zero. I'm about to hit submit. Can you imagine what is going to happen here? Imagine that and now let's actually click on submit. Is this what you imagined? That now we have a new variable b pointing to, once again, a string object. And did you imagine that the red arrow jumped from line 14 to line 16 because of course line 15 is blank. So here is where we are checking if is multiple. Now how do we evaluate this expression? Well we first have to call the is multiple function and that function will return a boolean. And now you will observe 
several interesting things. Since this is the first time we are encountering the visualization of a function call, this is not fair for me to expect you to imagine all the changes that you're going to see. We're going to see many changes to the visualization, to the red arrow. So I'm going to show you the different parts of it and we will keep going next, previous, next, previous to make sure we understand all the things that are happening on line 16 because many things are happening right now.